Thank you, everyone. Uh, my name is Paul. Don't first of all, uh, who did not attend the Pluto keynote this morning? Okay, so we have few people. I hope you're familiar with uh, reactivity already. Uh, so I, what I mean by reactivity is when you edit the cell, the code in the cell, then all dependent cells are updated with the new values. And the goal of this talk is kind of uh, take a look at how reactivity is implemented in, uh, in Pluto and uh, to present a package that we have to do some advanced uh, reactive experiences in Pluto. So the, um, first it starts by uh, analyzing your, the cell code. Um, so for example, uh, we have a cell that's the quote expression, we have already passed it and uh, you see it's uh, written x equals one and y equals x plus d. And we have um, build a tool to uh, uh, analyze what uh, what does the expression define. So you can see uh, we have two definitions in this cell, x and y, and then two references, uh, the z variables, um, but also the, the plus function. And this tool uh, is actually now a standalone package. Uh, it was named uh, after inter uh, Internet Explorer, and it, it's called Expression Explorer. So you can use it for other uh, applications. So after we have um, explored the expression, uh, we need to kind of see how the cells relate to each other. And we do this by building a reactive graph. And this graph is where we consider that cells are nodes and the edges in this graph are the variable references. So with these two cells, we have one edge, that's the reference to the cell one uh, variable. And uh, the edge is directed, it's going from the definition to uh, the usage. And so if I look at a few notebooks, I can actually uh, show the, the corresponding graph on the right. And so in this notebook, we have four cells. Uh, the first one is using a package. So this is this cell here, which is uh, alone in the graph, it's not connected. And then we have uh, cells that which have explicit definitions, and those would uh, be connected to others. So the fir this first one is defi defining the list, and so you can see that it has two uh, dependent cells which are using the list, which are the two other ones. And then the cell which has uh, no definition, it uh, only has incoming edges in its node. If we take a, a bigger notebook, uh, for example, this uh, Tower of Hanoi uh, notebook, we can see that the graph can become bigger, but we also have a bunch of uh, cells which are not connected to anything, and those are actually the markdown cells, so the, the text content of the notebook. Now if we take a look at a cycle, a notebook where we have um, a variables which defines uh, x equal y, y equal z, and then D equal x, uh, no, z equal y, uh, no, z, uh, z equal x, then we can see that the graph is actually a cycle. And uh, in this case, we will not be able to determine the order in which to run the cells. So it's not allowed. You can see the, the error on the right, on the left. So uh, when the notebook is uh, nicely made, the reactive graph is effectively a, a DAG, a di directed acyclic graph. So now that we have the, this graph and we know in which order to run the cells, uh, we need to actually evaluate the code. Um, to do this, we use uh, evaluation in Julia modules uh, to enable a few features. So what I mean by that is that we create Julia modules to do the evaluation for every run. And this allows things like uh, structural definitions or uh, to get the constant out of the scope. So for example, if I have a struct and I want to add a new field to my struct, then if I try in the repo, it will not work because uh, the name is already taken. In, in Pluto, it does work. And um, it does because we do the evaluation in a workspace, what we call workspace module. Uh, and what Pluto does under the hood is basically running the code in the module for the first time. And then if I add my new field, it just uh, looks at, uh, so only the struct is redefined. So we would evaluate the new struct and the uh, reference to the struct, but the old values which are not changed can be imported from the previous module. And we can also try to clean up the previous instance of the module by setting their value to nothing. 
which allows the garbage collector to clean up the old values. Okay, another transformation that Pluto does is trying to wrap your function inside uh, your code inside functions. So your global scope uh, code. It can have some problems in performance in Julia with regard, for example, to mutable globals. But Pluto instead, it knows that you, it knows the variable, the, the global variable you are assigning to, and also knows the variable you're referencing. So we can just wrap the code inside a function, and this function which takes as parameters the global variables that are referenced, the incoming edges to the cell, and it returns the results. So uh, in this case, the HTML element, but also the global variables it's assign assigning to. And now an evaluation is just calling this function with the right parameters. And afterwards, we can just assign the globals. And this allows for uh, reusing the compiled code and also um, the mutable globals are not a problem anymore because we know there is no assignment to them and they are passed as parameters. Okay, now let's talk about uh, metaprogramming in Julia. Um, so, uh, Julia macros, they are a function if we take uh, Julia expressions and also uh, can output any Julia expression. So, if we just uh, look at the code from here, like the symbolics.jl uh, variables macro, we can see that it's just a macro call to, to this uh, macro and then it just takes a list of symbols as parameters. Uh, we don't know if it's assigning to the uh, new values to them. And so in order to do a better analysis of this code, Pluto uses a uh, macro expansion to analyze both the, um, the unexpanded expression, where you can see if we analyze just this expression, we only get one reference to the macro, but uh, we don't know if it's defining any variables. But if we take a look now and explore the expanded version, we can see that we have two definitions. In this case, here, x and y, but also a reference to the random function. And by combining these two uh, exploration results, we get the real uh, references and assignments of uh, a cell. And now if we uh, uh, combine this and we keep it up in the reactive uh, evaluation, the macro becomes reactive. I can really run and it knows that it defined the x variable. And you can see the, here the, the expanded version of the macro code. Okay, um, so I, I said that Pluto does expand your, um, expand the cell code prior to, to perform analysis on it, but it, we actually, it actually does uh, cache this expanded code. So that means that we expand only once and look at the results and then keep the exp expanded expression around. Um, that means that the macro that does some uh, pre-processing of, uh, uh, of the inputs, so for example, the HTML macro, it does some HTML pathing and stuff. And it, so it just only happen at expansion time. And then we keep around the expanded expression and we run only this. And this is also similar, uh, this is consistent with the function wrapping I presented, where if you have a macro inside a function definition, the macro is called only once when the function is defined. And when you call the function again, the macro is not called again. So, and th this allows us to uh, trust the expression explorer results because we, the hypothesis is that the macro expansion is deterministic. And so for this expression cache, uh, we need to know when to update the cache and uh, delete the old uh, expanded expression. Uh, so for this, uh, it's quite simple. So when a cell is run because of one of the parent cells was updated, because this is an implicit run and that's when we keep the expanded expression around. And however, if the cell is explicitly run by the user by pressing either shift enter pressing the run button, <coughs> or also in a special case where you redefine a macro in the notebook, which is called, then uh, this is an explicit run and we expand again the expression. And so uh, now I'll present a package that can be used to build a uh, more advanced, um, advanced uh, exp uh, expression 
uh, reactive experiences, uh, and it's inspired by uh, React.js hooks. Uh, is anyone familiar with React hooks? Yeah, some of you. And so uh, the idea is to add new mechanism to uh, the to the reactive experience, which uh, I kind of escape hatches. So, uh, for example, you want to add state to the cells by remembering the previous values, or um, also uh, trigger reruns from Julia, since now it's only possible to run, to trigger a run from the, the browser, from uh, user input with a slider, for example. So in this case, uh, the package also allows you to rerun, trigger a rerunning from the Julia code. And also it uh, enables handling of the side effects. So the first Pluto hooks uh, is uh, called use ref, and you give it uh, an initial value. And it's uh, it's quite simple. It's just return uh, a reference, and every time the cell is uh, is run, the the reference would be the same. So in this case, I have a slider uh, with a value, and I want to keep track of all uh, the values of of the sum of all the values which happened uh, uh, when the users move the sliders. And since uh, the use ref returns the same ref every time the cell is run, I can just uh, sum its value and uh, by setting its initial state by to zero. And then if I move the sliders, the sum updates. So now if I move the slider to 10, the value uh, increases by 10. And if I want to reset uh, the reference, I just click, the I do an explicit run, and now it will run and uh, reset the state, so it starts at zero and adds the value. And I get uh, a 10 here. So that's for uh, use ref, the, the one of the simplest hooks, which allows you to store a uh, value consistently across uh, runs. Now we have an another uh, hooks, which is called use state, also uh, very much inspired by uh, React.js uh, use state. And we turn two things. The first one is the state, and the second one is a, a, a function which allows uh, one to set the state. Um, the state is uh, also consistent across reruns, but the set state function is interesting because it actually triggers a new run of the cell, but with a new value that's, that's given. So here, the cell will run, and then we start a new task, sleep for one second, and then set, uh, trigger a new run with a new value. And so what will happen is, if I run the cell, it, it will get the value uh, of the tuple loading, and then after one second, uh, the cell will rerun from Julia uh, with the value uh, of the symbol done. So let's run it. And after one second, it triggers a new run with the value done. So one one warning and one maybe a uh, problem that can happen with use state is that it's very easy to introduce infinite loop where a cell keeps rerunning itself if the set state is uh, called unconditionally. So uh, if you want to use the package, keep that in mind. Okay, so now we have uh, another uh, hooks called use effect, and the idea is to memorize uh, a set of dependencies and trigger an effectful uh, computation only when those uh, uh, values change. So in our case, we have a text field and we want to save the name of to the database only when uh, the lower case of the name changes. And um, otherwise we want to, to do nothing. And uh, so we, we call use effect with the, the lower case name as a dependency. And the computation will happen only when the name uh, changes, but when I I, I just uh, change the name uh, by just setting names in uppercase, then uh, it will not trigger. And uh, if you set uh, an empty uh, dependency array, then the computation is uh, run only once. So, for example, if I here have uh, 
I have a dependency on a variable and I say uh, you can see here the, the use effect was run but <coughs> if I update the, the value the use effect is not run because there is no dependency on uh, the xx variable but if I put a dependency now when I update the value uh, then the, the effect runs but then if I trigger a run without changing the value the effect does not run and use uh, so use effect and use ref uh, yeah and one last thing about use effect is that you can return a callback which is a what we call a, a cleanup function and this callback it's called uh, when the expression cache is, is trashed and it can be used to do some cleanups so for example um, when the port change, we want to start a new server on this port. But then, uh, if you don't stop the server uh, when starting the new one, um, then you get an error about the port being uh, already taken. So you need to do a, a cleanup, and uh, that was uh, use effect can be used for too. Okay, and we can uh, combine use effect and use ref to build uh, the use memo hooks. Um, so the question wa was asked this morning about how to do some heavy computation and that's one way to, to do it. Uh, so say we have a large language model or, or some training of, of machine learning models that takes a long time. And when you update some parameters, you don't want to do the, the whole training. You can use the use memo uh, hooks. So it takes a computation again and a set of dependencies and in this case, uh, it runs the computation only when the dependencies change. Otherwise, it just returns the cached value. So in this case, if I change the, the lambda value, uh, then it, it will run the computation. You see that it runs. But uh, if I just run it and it didn't change, it will not run. Or it, no, it will run, but just take the cache values. And since data is not in the parameters, I can, in the dependency at least, I can just change it and it will not rerun. So if you want to train the model again, you have to, to run the cell explicitly. And now um, some of these hooks uh, we've combined in a, in a package called uh, Pluto Links, uh, which can be used, uh, which is uh, a set of hooks or a set of macros that are built from the hooks um, which usually combine use state and use effect to have some uh, long running task from uh, Julia. So you usually have uh, a state variable uh, created with use state and then we use use effect to spawn a, a task that's long running that does some things in the background and then the task uh, calls the set state callback when an event happens, so it could be any kind of events. Um, and then so the cell will run again, and so it can be used to trigger uh, reactive runs. So one uh, example of this is the revise macro, where um, you just call it uh, revise on, on a using statement or an import statement. And uh, since with revise, it's possible to know when uh, the package code changes. Uh, Pluto links is able to trigger a reactive run uh, of the cell when the package code change. So here is an, uh, a video example. So in the front, I'm editing the, the package code. And when I save the file, the revise macro at the top triggers a reactive run, which will update, the, which will trigger the run of the test set of the test and then the test will fail since I introduced an, an error. So that's how the, um, the revised uh, macro can be used. And there is also uh, uh, other uh, macros for uh, other kind of events, kind of uh, also for uh, getting the file watching with uh, getting the file values file content uh, and other uh, macros so you can take a look at the package.
thank you for listening. Uh, if you have uh, want to build your own hooks or uh, take a look at these packages and have questions, don't forget to join the uh, Pluto JL channel on the Zulip. And uh, we are also doing maybe a, a, a meetup on tomorrow that we will announce on the Zulip chat. So if you are interested in building hooks, uh, don't hesitate to join. Thank you. So thank you very much. Are there questions in the audience? Are you excited to build your own hooks right now or not? I see a question there in the back. Uh, yes. Yeah. So the question was, uh, did we encounter some problems uh, related to macro lowering in in Julia when maybe playing with hooks? Uh, yes, I think s one of the main problem is that if you have a macro that returns an expression calling another macro, then the gen gen seeming isn't the same for the for the names. So that's one problem. But I think we can work around by being smart about the way we emit uh, the, the expressions. Any other question? Oh. Yes, so we the Pluto hooks, uh, they will have uh, a different behave uh, like so in a when you run them uh, in a Julia context and not in Pluto, uh, they would uh, behave in a different way. Um, I don't remember exactly the semantics, but for example, use memo would perform the computation. Uh, I'm not exactly sure if is if there is actual uh, memoization when you're not inside Pluto. Uh, for the use states, uh, it makes I we also have no no way to rerun from the top computation. Oh uh, yes, but uh, yeah, that's also so use ref also it returns a ref uh, the which is uh, also uh, consistent I think. So use ref you could it's basically this uh, implementation so it's a uh, you return a ref that's uh, created at uh, expansion time. Yeah. Yeah. So when you deploy your frame example, yes. Does that have to rely on the data? Like when it's rerunning from the data frame? Yes. But in the order where it's called the expansion of Julia, it will return data with. Yeah. It, so Can they. The yeah. The question is, um, so here uh, use memo as does not have data in its dependencies array, but uh, so will Pluto save the data definition before? still and uh, the question is yes because in the so in the closure in the in the function that performs the computation we still have a, a reference to data here so uh, it will still uh, place the data definition before okay any more questions from the audience if not then I have a question so do you have future plans or what are future ideas what you want to do with Pluto hooks? Will it follow the React.js roadmap? Or? Um, yeah, it's a good question. Uh, I don't think we will follow exactly the React.js uh, roadmap. It, uh, it was uh, more about what can we do to, to provide uh, uh, re-execution from the Julia side. Whereas uh, before the hooks, uh, you could not trigger a run without having a browser open and uh, and moving the sliders or pressing shift enter. So that was the main focus. I know we have maybe have to think how to improve the, the model. Okay. Any more questions from the audience? Yes, over there. It's a it's a good question. So 
uh, you mean uh, so you mean the random number generator? Uh, can you okay. repeat the question? Yeah, the, so the question is how do we resolve the dependencies with respect to random functions and a random number generator? So um, it's actually uh, there is no special handling for this. So it's uh, uh, what the f to do uh, like deterministic random number generations. You would actually use uh, the signature of the random function that takes in the random number generator uh, to be explicit about the order. Uh, otherwise, Pluto does not know that. Uh, uh, and then the order is kind of implicit based on if there are no uh, dependencies between two random calls, then it's just the order of appearance in the notebook file. Okay, then one last big applause for Paul.